To commemorate the founding of New Orleans in 1718, WYES presents this tricentennial moment in celebration of our city's past and present. How do you put Pete Fountain into words? Better to let the music speak for itself. To many, he is the sound of New Orleans, and for more than 60 years, one of the city's most famous native sons became the ultimate musical and cultural ambassador for his hometown. Fountain's smiling face and shining clarinet took him around the world, but also kept him rooted here in New Orleans. He took up the clarinet as a child to help strengthen his weak lungs. Music lessons continue through school at McDonough 28 and Warren Easton, where he tried to balance Bourbon Street gigs with an education. Instead, he began playing music full-time with his own band, the Basin Street Six, and later the Dukes of Dixieland. In the 1950s, he spent two years on TV's Lawrence Welk Show, which beamed his Dixieland sound into American homes once a week. Before long, Pete and his family returned home, where he opened his own club on Bourbon Street, and later the Riverside Hilton Hotel. He went on to record 56 albums, earning four gold records. But for this international star, who played for four U.S. presidents, it was a performance here at home that he called the pinnacle of his career, playing for Pope John Paul II at an outdoor mass on the lakefront in 1987. That showed Pete's spiritual side, but he was equally famous for embodying the spirit of the city's biggest celebration, Mardi Gras. His half-fast walking club, founded in 1960, became a Fat Tuesday fixture. When Pete Fountain died in 2016, his funeral mass at St. Louis Cathedral was followed by a huge second line parade through the French Quarter. WYS's New Orleans Tricentennial Moments are brought to you by the Miro Foundation and presented in association with the historic New Orleans Collection. <laughs>